I'll follow where your spirit leads Broken as my life may be I will give you every peace I hear you come I am available I say yes Lord I am available 
Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for this time that we have together, Lord God, to worship you, to lift your name up, Lord Jesus. God, it is all for you. It is all to lift your name high, oh God. So ladies, if you would lift your voice and we can raise our Father high. Jesus, we lift the name of Jesus above everything, above every name, above every battle, above every struggle we might be going through tonight, Lord God. Jesus, we are here. We are available, Lord God. Jesus, we are expecting God with open arms, Jesus. Whatever you wanna do tonight, we are yours, Lord God. So Jesus, I pray as we continue the service, Jesus, that you would just open our hearts, God, that you would make us moldable, Jesus. Soften us, God, so that you can do a work in our lives and speak something new. Jesus, we thank you for this time. And God, I pray over Josie as she's going to bring the word today, Lord God, Jesus, that our hearts would be ready for that, that there can be a seed planted, Lord Jesus. So we just bless her, God. And Lord, we are so excited for what you're going to do tonight. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. All right, ladies, you can go ahead and have a seat. We're so excited to have you all here with us tonight. It is so fun to gather. I don't know about you ladies, but I have missed it. I feel like it was forever ago when we met last. Yes, yeah, I know, it's crazy. And so there's something that we always do here at Beloved. We, we love to honor, honor ladies in our house. And we're gonna do something a little bit different this time. It's gonna look a little different. Um, it's our heart to give. It's our heart to, to look at each other and take care of each other and be there for one another. And so tonight what we're gonna do is if you are a single mom and you have kids at home, I want you to raise your hand. Single moms, okay, come on up. Come on up to the front. Come on, ladies, don't be shy. Up here, up here. Okay, let's give another round of applause, yeah? Single mamas, come on down, come on down. So what we wanna do is this, let's see, we have one, two, ladies gather over here. We wanna pray over you guys, we wanna bless you. So come over this way. All right, ladies, so we are so thankful for what you do, for the way that you are raising your children. It is a hard job. I cannot imagine it, I cannot. And I just wanna encourage you Keep doing what you're doing. Keep showing up. It is so important that you show up to church, that you go the extra mile and you show up to Beloved Night. That teaches your kids a big message. And we are so thankful for that. And we support you and we love you. We are your family. We're here for you. And we just want to bless you guys and honor you with a, um, a gift here. So I'm going to go ahead and pray over you, ladies. And ladies, if you would extend your hands out to them. Extend your hands. Jesus, we thank you for these moms. God, they have a call on their lives to raise godly children. Jesus, I pray that you would give them strength every day in the daily tasks, Lord God, and in the valleys, in the mountains of life, Lord God, that you would comfort them and be there for them, Lord Jesus, and that they would um, lean on you, Lord God, for those moments and how to encourage their kids and how to be there for them when they're going through their struggles, God. Jesus, bless them abundantly. We love them, and I pray that they would know they were never alone, God. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. All right, ladies, why don't you go ahead and give them another hand? We are so thankful for you. You're doing amazing. As they're making their way back to their seats, um, we don't just honor all our singer mommies tonight, but we wanted to honor a specific person. We do this every beloved night, and it's to show this person that we're backing them, we're standing behind them. And this one to, that we're going to honor tonight is so special to this house. And she is such a warrior, such a prayer warrior. She is her and the Holy Spirit are right like this, and we love her so much. Um, she's been through a little bit of a hard year, so we wanted just to bless her and tell her that we love her and we're praying for her. So Joy Kerrigan, if you'll please come up. You guys, this beautiful young lady right here has had a little bit of a rough year, but that she is a true testament to the faithfulness of God and the, and, the, and the grace and the mercy of God. And so we love her so much. And so we're gonna pray for this next chapter in her life. Um, so if you guys will reach your hands this way, we're gonna pray over joy. Lord, we just thank you, God, for this 
this gift that you've given us in her, Father God. Lord, there is such a sweet spirit in joy, God. And I just pray, Lord, this next chapter would be one of Holy Spirit journeys, God. Fresh anointing, Jesus. God, just you would overflow every part of her life, God. Lord, that she would just overcome every battle that comes her way, Father God, with just Jesus, Holy Spirit victory, Father God. Lord, that she'd know that she has sisters standing behind her to love her and be there for her. God, I pray, Lord, when she is in her room late at night, Father God, you give her visions and dreams, God, and just bless her heart, mind, and soul. And God, I just pray you would just, God, bring new life and new vision and a fresh star over joy. God, we thank you and we praise you for everything that she is in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Okay, what, we're gonna tell you what we got. We got you some lovely skincare from a spa and then some other spa items. We got, we couldn't leave Braveheart, her dog, out. So we got him a $50 gift card to Petco and then a Target gift card and lots of spa stuff. So we hope that you just spoil yourself. And yeah, we love you so much. Everybody give it up for Joy. I love you, Joy Girl. And now we're going to keep it in the family and we're gonna go to our lovely Miss Josie Kerrigan. Guys, give it up to her. I don't know if you saw the beloved Instagram, but this woman was in, in high heels sawing like two days ago. She loves you. So give it up for Josie. Love you. Speaking of giving it up, can we just give a, one more round of applause because you're in the mood to applaud right now for the beloved dream team for putting all this together. Yes, y'all are amazing. It looks so beautiful every single time. They just go the extra mile to make it beautiful in here and just love them so much. Thank you, ladies, for all that you do. Well, I am so excited to share with you tonight. I love, love, love bringing in guest speakers so that we can hear from them, but I am excited to share from my heart tonight. I really um, feel like God's laid something on my heart for you girls, for our house, for this moment in this time. So we're gonna to look to the word of God tonight to encourage us, to teach us, and um, really just launch us into the new year that's coming sooner than like we blink and we're through the holidays, right? So this is gonna position us for 2021. So can we just pray for a second and just still our hearts and ask God to give us ears to hear. Father God, in this moment, we're just your girls gathered at your table, your beloved daughters sitting around. I just picture it around a table and Father God, you want to speak to us. You want to share from your heart, from your word, from the bread of life. So God, we open ourselves up to you tonight. God, I pray that you would speak through me. I pray that you would help me communicate what you've laid on my heart. And I pray that we would lean in, even as the Holy Spirit whispers to us that sometimes it's not a shout, it's just in that whisper. And I pray that our hearts would be open to hear from you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, yes, I've been praying for tonight, I've been praying for you, and I wanna start with a scripture from Philippians that stuck out to me and draw three things out of this portion of scripture that we're gonna look at tonight. It's Philippians chapter three, starting in verse 13, and it says this, I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. I'm gonna reread that first portion. I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. As Paul is writing this, he's actually in prison. He's about 20 years on in his ministry. He's been around the block. He's done some things. This is not necessarily speaking only about, okay, when I was not a Christian, I'm forgetting about that. He's had a journey with the Lord. He's been, you know, betrayed by people that served with him in ministry. He's been persecuted. I just, he's been through a lot. If you read the New Testament, Paul was one of those people that life was not easy for him. And so he's sitting here in jail and he is penning this for us. And he says, one thing I'm doing is I'm forgetting about the past. You know, I think in order to reach 
for the future, this is such an important key. And it was the first thing that I want to communicate that I felt like God wanted to share with you tonight in order to write our next chapter, in order to go into the future that God has for us because we have unlimited potential and the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, we have to make peace with our past. There are some things that have happened that we didn't want to happen. I don't know about you, but 2020 for many people was something they didn't want to happen. There are some things, maybe some pages in the book of your life where you didn't even write those pages. Somebody else picked up the pen and wrote them for you and you didn't want that story. There's some things that have happened that you wish hadn't happened or some things you wish you could forget. Maybe you took the pen and you wrote some pages and you're like, that was a mistake. I wish I could just forget that happened. Or you've been betrayed by somebody or maybe it's your job situation that didn't work out like you thought it was gonna work out or your family or your relationship or you're not married yet. I don't know what the disappointments are in your life, but we all have them. We have things in our past that like, oh, and you know, you can just like ruminate and regurgitate in your mind. Like if that happened again, I would, this is what I would tell them. And this is what I would do. And you just like hold on to it and you have all that regret and you just think about it. And you're like, I would do better. If only they would come back, I would show them, you know, all these kind of things. But we're not forgetting about the past. We have to make peace with the fact that it has happened. And but by the grace of God, the blood of Jesus covers it or we can't move forward. We can't write a new chapter if we're just reading over the old one over and over and wishing we could go and strike over a few things or we're upset because somebody else, like I said, grabbed a pen and wrote some pages in our book that we had not planned on. But God, through his mercy and his grace, has called us to some amazing future. It says right here, in the second part of this verse, to receive a heavenly prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us. He is calling us forward. He's not calling us back. And it takes a lot of work to make peace with the past when we don't like what was there. I mean, it's fine to remember the fun, happy birthday parties and the happy moments and stuff like that. But tonight, I want to challenge you to do the hard work to reconcile what has happened and leave it in the past. And realize that you are where you are today because of the past, but that does not at all dictate your future. The good things, the bad things, God has been faithful to us, but we have to make peace with our past. Allow it to make us better and not bitter. In every single situation that we've gone through, there's gold to be extracted. There's something that we can learn. Let's pick up the gold and carry it with us into the future, but the rest of it we have to leave in the past or we will be too burdened to run the race that God has called us to run. I love this passage from Psalm 18 in the message translation, and I think it's so fitting. I'm gonna read it for you. It says, God made my life complete when I placed all the pieces before him. I love that. He didn't say when I placed my perfect masterpiece before him. It says when I placed all my pieces, sometimes we're broken. Sometimes we don't like the past, but we have to come to peace with it and present it to God anyway as a living sacrifice. Look, God, here are my pieces. What can you make out of this? I placed all the pieces before him. When I got my acts together, he gave me a fresh start. It's like when we decide, okay, God, what happened, happened. I didn't like it, but here it is. Here are my pieces. When you decide to do that, he gives us a fresh start. Now I'm alert to God's ways. I don't take God for granted, and every day I review the ways he works. I try not to miss a trick. I feel put back together, and I'm watching my step. Listen to this. God rewrote the text of my life when I opened the book of my heart to his eyes. We want God to write our next chapter. We need to open up the book of our heart for him to pick up a pen and start writing. I heard somebody say this and it stuck with me. I love it so much. It says, bruised heels still stomp devil's heads. 
It doesn't matter what has happened in the past. You are strong and you'll be stronger. If we present it to God, he makes a masterpiece out of broken pieces. That is the God we serve. That's what he does. And bruised heels stomp devil's heads. And that's what our future is all about. So no more dwelling in the past. Make peace with your past. The second part I felt to share with you is to show up in our present. You know... Okay, so we decided to close the door on our past and make peace with it, settle it once and for all so that we can shed the weight. In our present, maybe we're not exactly where we wanna be. Maybe the chapters that were written led us to a point in our story that we're like, okay, this is not where I wanna be, but I'm not gonna look back anymore, so here I am. So what do we do today? Right now, when we don't yet have the promise, when we're not yet walking in all the dreams and all the amazingness that we desire for our lives, we have to show up and own today. Our daily yes matters. It builds our future. The other day I was in our laundry room and um, I don't know about you guys, but so our kids pretty much do their own laundry and so one load will be for one person and then it goes to the dryer and then it's folded. So that's like theirs and you shuttle it through. But then somehow, I don't know how it happens. There is a basket. Maybe I should just remove the basket. But there is a basket right by my um, laundry machine where I put like towels from the kitchen, you know, just like some random thing. But it's like it's the orphan laundry basket. Like nobody ever wants to wash that. We wash what's ours, but like that laundry basket is just always sitting there and somehow it fills up and it has a little bit from everybody, but like nobody wants to take ownership and wash it. Because it's also the most pain in the butt to fold it all and sort it all out because it goes to like every room in the house. So it's like the mismatched laundry basket. And I was standing there and I was like, oh, I'm so frustrated. I feel like every time I'm the one gets stuck doing this orphan laundry basket and I'm not going to do it this time. I'm going to wait and see if anybody ever does it. So a few weeks later, I'm like out of socks and dish towels and nobody has washed the laundry in my mismatched laundry basket. And I felt just like this prompting. It was kind of a, I wouldn't say like the presence of the Lord, but just this little teacher moment by the Holy Spirit in my heart. And he's like, hey, listen, you got to take ownership. Like you're a grown up and this is your house. This is your laundry room. If you want the orphan laundry basket laundered, you're the one to do it. And I was like, you're right. I'm the lady of the house. This is my laundry room and I like it clean, so I'm gonna do this laundry basket. Sometimes we push off on other people Well, we have to take ownership because it's easier. So in this moment, we have to own today. We have to show up today. And if our showing up today is a mismatched laundry basket and not exactly what we thought or wanted for our day, we still have to do it. God's not gonna promote us. He's not gonna give us more until we take ownership of what we have right in front of us. Where are you at right now? How can you be faithful and show up and steward what God has given you? So we have to make peace with our past and we have to show up in our present and allow him to start working in us and on us by showing up daily and doing the thing that maybe we don't wanna do, but being faithful in doing it. It says, yes, God, I am available. Just like that song says, because often we qualify it and we're like, yes, Lord, I am available for all these amazing things that I want to do that are my heart's desire and dream. But don't ask me to do that. You know, I am available means right now, today, I'm going to show up in love and in kindness, I'm gonna walk in the fruit of the spirit. I'm gonna choose to walk as an overcomer. I'm gonna speak words of life over my children. I'm gonna do the laundry that I need to do and I'm not gonna gripe about it. I'm gonna do the dishes. I'm gonna make my bed. I'm gonna love my husband. I'm gonna not be sad that I don't have X, Y, Z. I'm gonna take care of what you've given me. Steward today. And that will give you more tomorrow, I guarantee it, because that is how God works. He says, if we're faithful in little, he will give us much. He's watching, he's watching us. Even how we treat our orphan laundry basket matters to God. (laughs) It says in the word of God that he is interested in every detail of our life. What you say in the bathroom when you look yourself in the mirror matters to God. Your body image, the clothes you wear, Everything matters to God. Show up today. Show up in our present and make peace with our past. And if there's something right now 
that you're struggling with, that you're stuck in, that you just feel is frustrating. Maybe it's because of something in your past or maybe it's just, ugh. It's time to break it off. It's time to be done with it and it's time to grow up and stand up and be the royalty that you've been called to be and say, I'm breaking up with gossip. I'm breaking up with anger. I'm breaking up with these awful relationships that I shouldn't be doing. I'm breaking up with these books that I've been reading. I'm breaking up with these TV shows that I shouldn't be watching. Show up today like royalty because that is who you are, amen? That's what it looks like to be faithful and live like a woman of God. It's just day in and day out and it's not always this glorious thing, but it is on the inside. And God sees and he calls you faithful. And the third thing, and it's the best thing, is to dream big for your future. Make peace with your past, show up in the present and dare to dream big for your future. This is why, you know, we call the whole thing the next chapter is because I want us to lift our heads and not just look at, wow, what a horrible year. I feel so sorry for myself because I missed out on this and that family vacation and this and that. And there has been sickness and there has been death and there has been tragic things that have happened in 2020. But listen, God still has a future and a hope for us. And if we get so stuck in our current situation and in the trials that we're in, whatever they may be, whatever it is that's facing us, we somehow forget to dream big for the future. Some of us, we're not dreaming big for the future because we're afraid to be disappointed. We're like, well, it didn't happen last time. Well, we're disappointed anyway. So isn't it better just to go ahead and dare to dream a little bit? I think we limit God when we're just like, well, this is what it is now. He doesn't want us to say that. And I felt like he really wanted to tell you tonight to dare to dream big for your future. I was looking at studying this a little bit and God is always up to something new. There are 187 references in the word of God about God doing a new thing, starting something new, creating something new. It's a new day, it's a new dawn, whatever. He's doing something new, he's up to something. And we get so stuck in our rut. We're like, we wear the same makeup, the same hair, the same shoes, we sing the same songs, and we do all the same things. Same, 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 same. Just dare to reinvent yourself. Whatever it is that's on the inside of you, there's unlocked potential, not just for those of us that just got born again, not just for those of us that are about to graduate high school, for those of us just like Paul, who was sitting in prison, who was 20 plus years into his ministry, there's still unlocked potential on the inside of us because God is limitless. He put things inside of us that we have not yet dared to do or dream or think about, or pray about, because we're like, I just don't know if that could happen. There are things inside of me that I'm like, it's kind of scary, and like, I don't know if I wanna do that, you know? For all of us, it doesn't matter our age or where we're at in life, God has more for us. But he's asking like, are you gonna dare? Are you gonna wanna pursue it? Are you, the things that I'm dropping in your spirit, will you take them seriously? Will you write down the words that I'm speaking to you and step out on them? As I was writing this message and just the artistry of writing a book and allowing God to write the next chapter and I was thinking about our future and really what it is 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 opening a blank page and giving God the pen and letting him write that story. And it reminded me also of a potter and, and clay and how the potter crafts the clay on the wheel. And the Bible has a lot of stories about the potter and the clay. And I pictured myself as the clay on the potter's wheel. Now, some of you guys who know me well, you know that I like like things to be really symmetrical and I like things to be really pretty and stuff. So I could just picture myself like, because there are verses in the Bible that talks about that the clay talked to the potter and was like, I don't want to be this way. You're making a mistake. You should shape me this way. I could just picture myself like God spinning me around and I'm like, no, no, no. I want a little bubble here. And how about you give me a handle over here? Like sometimes we're so concerned about shaping our lives that we don't give full control to the potter who actually made the clay. And he knows the pot exactly how he has designed it to be. Yes, amen, go ahead and clap for that. Isaiah 64 verse eight says, and yet, O Lord, you are our father. We're the clay. Like, let's not forget that. We're not the potter. In this story, we're the clay. Sometimes we wanna put ourselves in the place of the potter. But you're our father, we are the clay, and you are the potter, 
and we are formed by your hand, allowing God to shape our future. I have only used a pottery wheel once, but I went ahead and studied a little bit about what it takes, and there's so many steps that goes into it. And I'm gonna bring just a few of them to you tonight for you to see just the intricacy of God using that allegory to explain our lives. First of all, the clay has to be prepped. Like, you know how the potter just has to knead it for a long time? It's not just because he thinks it's fun, it has to get all the air bubbles out. It has to become moldable because too often the clay is too stiff and he has to work on it in order to even be able to put it on the wheel. I think some of us, we find ourselves there and we're like, ugh, he's gonna have to need me to get some of the junk out of my life before I can even become a vessel, you know what I mean? And then the second part he does is he puts it on the wheel and there's something called centering. Because if the, if the clay is not exactly at the center of that wheel when it starts spinning, you're gonna become all sorts of crooked and it'll just throw it off the wheel like it's not good. So he has to center it and he's doing this with his hands and just making sure, which is so skilled to be able to do that, to feel when it's exactly centered. Listen, if God is going to be able to use us in the future, we have to center our lives on Jesus. We have to allow him to just squeeze us from every side until we're perfectly centered on him and we're not sidetracked over here or there. We're gonna fly off the wheel. So we have to be moldable and then he has to center us and then he starts shaping us. And to do that, the first thing he does is like pushes right in the center. When he has it right centered, he opens up the clay. It breaks it open. Some of us, we've had our lives broken open. But can I tell you, it's creating a beautiful vessel that God can use to pour out his glory. And again, sometimes we're like, why are you doing this? Why are you shaping me this way? I wanna read to you from Romans chapter nine, verse 20. But you who are human, you talk back to God and say, how would you talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, why did you make me like this? Some of us get so stuck on looking at other pots that are being formed by the potter and wishing we looked like them or wishing this or wishing our life was different. Tonight, I want you to just surrender to the potter, to his hands on the wheel, trusting the process that he is bringing you through. After he shapes the pot, it gets put aside and it just sits there and dries. It's like nothingness for a long time because if it's not perfectly dry, it can't go on to the next step. I think some of us, we just feel like, well, did God just put me on the shelf? I'm just sitting here, did he forget about me? He did not forget about you. You know what you do if you're in a season of just sitting on the shelf and drying? You own your present, you show up today. You own that shelf you're sitting on and you do the laundry and you say the yes and you serve and you show up. And God, at the right time, will pick you back up from the shelf and put you back to where you need to be. After that, they start glazing and beautifying the pot. And then, my favorite part, the potter puts his seal on the pot. Before it goes into the oven and becomes hard, he puts his mark on there. We want God to put his mark on our lives. But you know something? He's not gonna mark something that he didn't make. An artist marks their pieces. Sometimes we put ourselves on the wheel and we're like, I wanna look like this. And then we're like, God, come mark me. Bless what I'm doing. This was all my idea. This is what I wanted for my life. I didn't even consult you, but come bless it. Thank you. I don't know who said that, but yes. It's true, we have to surrender our will to him. If we're asking him for big things in the future, we gotta put ourselves on his wheel because he's, he's the one who put all that potential on the inside of us. We don't know what it's supposed to be, he does. We can't just go running off writing our own story and then asking God to be the author after we've already written it. So tonight, what I want you to do is ask God, what does he have? for your future, so you can start declaring it. Your words are powerful. We need to prophesy the future that God has for us into being. Even at this point, the clay that is in that jar can still 
be molded back together and the potter can still start over. Isn't that so amazing? Like if you have shaped your own life and you didn't invite God to create the masterpiece that he wanted, Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 18, verse four. It says, but the jar he was making didn't turn out as he had hoped. I think at some points God has looked at my life and been like, um, hello, Josie, that did not turn out like I had hoped. And I'm like, me neither. I don't know how I got in this mess. But you know, it's not the end of the world. What does he do? So he crushes it into a lump of clay again and starts over. Isn't that amazing? God's not like, oh well, now we have this ugly pot. I guess we just have to put that on display but never use it because it's of no good. No, no, no. He just puts it back into a clay and then he starts over again, shaping us and molding us for the rest of our lives. He is not finished with us yet. Amen. I want to just show you, I've got some pots over here. They're not actually clay pots, so don't get too excited. It's more like a bowl, but you know. Where is, um, can you go ahead and bring that, yes, bring that up for me. When God makes you, it's for a purpose. He wants you to hold his glory. He wants you to hold all these amazing things. We can just leave that here. Give it up for Chrissy, amazing. Look, he makes you perfectly shaped for the right thing that he wants to put in there. And he's like, this is amazing. Some of us, this is where we're at in life. We're like, yes. We allowed God to do something, it's working, we're doing good, he has put his seal on us and we're holding the things that he has entrusted us with. I wanna to talk to you for just a minute. This is great, but there is something more. God is over here like, yeah, but I got more for you and your bowl's too small. You are going to have to allow yourself to get crushed again, which is not fun, but you're gonna to have to put yourself on the potter's wheel because guess what? The only way to hold more, you can't fit it in there, so you gotta get a bigger bowl. God wants to increase your capacity. Listen, for 2021, this was great for 2020, but now he's calling you, he's saying, I've got more for you. You're gonna have to increase your capacity. You're gonna let me stretch out your bowl a little bit so that you can hold more, so that you can disciple more people, so that you can get that promotion, so that you can, have one more child. I don't know what this year looks like for you, but I can tell you this, God always has more, right? And then we get so comfortable. Some of us, we're not broken pieces, we're just comfortable. We're like, I can handle this, this is good. Or we've even gotten here and we're like, this is great. Look, God is giving me increase. And he's like, yes, but do you want more? Because if you allow me again, to increase your capacity, to stretch your faith, to walk in even more forgiveness and love and pray even harder, whatever it is for you, I've got more. He has so much that he wants to fill us up with. So the bigger the bowl, the more we can hold. Listen, if this was you in 2020, let this be 2021. Ask God to write a bigger chapter and dream big for your future, wherever you're at. He is never finished with us. There's always more. So making peace with our past, showing up in our present, and then dreaming big for our future. Because right now, maybe you find yourself with broken pieces, God makes all things new again. Maybe you have yourself a nice little medium-sized bowl and you're like, this is good. God's like, well, for the sake of the lost, would you allow me to make you a little bit uncomfortable so that I can stretch you a little bit? so that you could hold more, so that your vessel could be of greater use to the potter. God has so much that he wants to do in you and through you. He looks at your life and he sees a beautiful masterpiece even if you just see a lump of clay. He's so amazing how, like he said in that verse, he takes the pieces and he makes it something beautiful. I want you to just um, watch the screens in just a minute. We're going to listen to a testimony of somebody who at the beginning of this year found themselves in broken pieces and God made her brand new. Go ahead, guys. Let's play that video. At the beginning of this year, I started out so dark and broken. I had years of wounds from drug abuse, lack of identity, and broken relationships with my boys. 
The last weekend in January, I was dead inside and I knew I could no longer go through the motions. In my darkest moment, I cried out to God and said, okay God, I'm yours. That moment changed my life forever. I was so scared. I've always known God, but I've never accepted I was worthy of His love. But I was ready and He started a new chapter in my life. The next Sunday, I came to Uncommon Church with my family and answered the altar call and screwed in a light bulb to signify that I was giving my heart to Jesus. A few weeks later, I was baptized in water. I pressed and spent time seeking His face, hearing His voice, and He showed up. I was like an onion being peeled back each layer. God healed, comforted, and even removed the parts being revealed. All this was God laying a foundation because I was transitioning into the biggest battle yet, custody of my boys. My first day of court, my past was on full display, but I had full peace that God was with me and would defend me. The judge ordered immediate visitation, and today I get to spend every Sunday with my boys. Yes, that's right, my Sabbath. I walk with my head held high as I have the honor of seeing God's glory working in my life. I can't believe what a night and day difference my life is today from what it was in January of this year. I've been set free from addiction without even desire to use. I'm reunited with my boys, and best of all, I have resurrection power of Jesus living on the inside and eternal life through Christ. Jesus has begun writing a new story in my life, and I know this is only the beginning.
to the potter's house and you best believe oh he'll make something good yeah he'll make something good oh I know he will oh he'll make something good oh he'll make something good out of the dust good out of the dust. Would you just stand to your feet? And just in this moment, God is here with us. God, we just thank you that you're the potter and that you take broken things and you put them back together again. We're gonna go into a moment of prayer. And before we go any further, if you came in here tonight and you never made Jesus your Lord, you didn't surrender your life to him and put yourself on that potter's wheel. Listen, he loves you so much. Doesn't matter what your past is, he takes broken things and put them back together again. God loved you so much that he sent his only son Jesus to come to the world just for you. And if you were the only person, he would have come for you. He died on the cross in our place. So right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I wanna pray with you if you don't know Jesus before we move any further or do anything else tonight. And if that's you, if you could just slip up your hand with for me so that I know who I'm praying for and tonight is your night to find new hope in Jesus. Just wanna give you that opportunity before we move on. Or maybe you used to know Jesus, but you've walked away from him. You've walked away from Father's house. It's been a long time since you were in close relationship with him. And tonight you want to rededicate your life to him. Then this is your moment to do that. Okay, I think we're all good. So we're going to move on with what I believe God wants to do next. Right here and right now, I'm going to read you. Psalm 32, eight, and I want you to just remember this about your future. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. Some of us, we've struggled to surrender our future to God. We are trying to make our own pot, or maybe we don't have a vision for where we're going. God does. He has an amazing future for you, and this is your night to start dreaming big for the future again to determine to show up in your present, make peace with the past and see what God has for you. I'm gonna ask our prayer team to come on up and they're gonna stand on either side here, wherever they've prepared to stand left or right. But um, we're gonna go into a time of worship and of prayer and um, the ushers are gonna pass you this little card. It's an artist rendering of a beautiful woman on a potter's wheel and she is rising up into her future and on the back of it, There's a little prophetic prayer over you, and then there's a blank on the bottom. And during this next, it's probably too dark in here for you to read it, and that's okay, I want you to read it when you get home, but during this next time of worship, for the next few minutes, I want you to ask God what He wants to pen in your future, what kind of a pot He wants you to become. If you need to enlarge your territory or if you need to give him broken pieces or if you need to start allowing yourself to dream again or if it's that you need to show up in your present or if it's that you need to make peace with your past. I want you to think about what it is specifically that the Holy Spirit is asking you to take with you into 2021 and I want you to write that down on that blank little area on that card. In addition to that, If you want prayer, you can come up and pray with our prayer team. And I've asked them, I really felt like God wants to uh, release prophetic words over your future tonight so that you can hold on to them and start seeing what God wants for you. Um, Pam, I know that you're not assigned tonight, but would you want to come pray too? Our little prophetess over here, their masks over there. Um, And so if you want a prophetic prayer over your future, come forward and let these ladies pray over you. If you need to make peace with your past, then it's something that you really want to partner with somebody on to just seal that and say, I'm not gonna live in that past anymore. Then you come forward. And for the rest of us, let's worship and let's ask God what we should write on this little page. We're gonna give you some time 
to just ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you and start jotting those things down, amen? Let's worship.
Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray over all of you. I had a couple of words. One was I saw somebody when you were a little girl and you were sitting at a kitchen table. It was wooden and you were drawing with crayons what you wanted your future to be. I don't know if it was a house or a yard or a wedding or I don't know. But I saw you sitting there with your crayons and you're finding yourself in a place of disappointment. And God just wants to know, you to know that he sees you and he's the one who placed those dreams on the inside of you. And even if life has derailed your plans, he's gonna pull it back together again for you. He says, daughter, I see you. The thing that you saw when you were little will come to pass. Thank you, Jesus. For somebody, when I said that thing about bruised heels still stomps devil's heads, your heel has been bruised in 2020. And God wants you to know that you are powerful. You are powerful. Somebody has told you that you're not, that you are weak and that you can't hack it. God says that is not what he says about you. You are strong and you are powerful and this is your season to rise up. For all of us really, he's looking for the women of God that will stand up and not cower under circumstances, but start praying from a place of victory and walking forward. Let's pray. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, I just release faith in this room. Father, I release hope in this room. God, I release a an ability to see what you see about our futures. I declare in Jesus' name that you have a future and a hope and a destiny for every single woman that's in here. And whatever potential is locked up on the inside, whatever it is that we haven't quite dared to step into yet, Father, I pray that you would line things up and that we would begin to declare the Word of God and prophetic words over our life and speak truth over our future, that we would make a path with our words and with our prayers and that we would start taking steps in the direction that you're calling us, God. Father, I pray for faith. God, I pray for faith, that there would be no fear, that there would be faith in Jesus' name, that faith would arise. God, that we would cry as beloved sisterhood, that we're available. Here we are, God. We're available to you. Here I am, Jesus. We're available. Whatever you have for us, we will not step back. We will step forward. We will rise up. In this hour, we will rise up in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for faith arising in the room. Here we are, God. Surrender to you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Sing it out. Here I am. Tell him you're here, that you're available, whatever he has. We don't have an agenda. Whatever you want to shape us into, God, we're here for you. Use us, Jesus, for your glory. You can have it all, Jesus.
Father God, thank you so much for tonight, Lord. We are so grateful to be in this house of worship, saying your name, Lord, giving ourselves, the, allowing us to be the clay in your hand, Lord. You are our potter and we're so grateful to allow our pottery to grow, Father God, with your spirit. Lord, we want your mark on us. We don't want to be in control of it. It is your mark, Lord. Thank you so much for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Aaron, wow. have you had fun tonight? <laughs> Man, I had an amazing time. Tonight's been really cool, right, ladies? Mm -hmm. I think so. We have had some amazing worship. Give it up for the worship team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Encouraging word. Thank you, Josie. <laughs> We've had fellowship. Give it up. Don't worry about 2020. We're here, right? Sisterhood. Sisterhood. So yeah. Good. So good. <laughs> you know, all of this tonight really brought home the beloved mission. Yeah. Do you know what it is, Aaron? Do you think they do? I think we need to tell them. I think we need to tell them. Yeah. All right. So in case you didn't know, the beloved mission has three tenets, okay? The first one is to love God. Do you guys love God? Do we love God? That one's easy, right? That one's easy. Okay. <laughs> love each other. I love you, girl. I love you, girl. <laughs> we love you too, right? The last one is to love the world. Yeah. Now that one is a little harder to show. Yeah. It's easy to say. <laughs> it's harder to show because we get comfortable, right? Right. We get comfortable in our little bowl, in our little community, with other believers that look like us, that talk like us that love God like us, yeah. but we're called to do something more. Loving the world is not just a beloved mission. Right, it's actually in the Bible and Jesus tells us about it. In Matthew 28, 18 through 20, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations. Wait, Aaron, all nations? Not just DFW. Not just America. Not just America? Oh, all no. nations. Okay, all nations. Okay, go on. <laughs> all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So he's with us. He's with us always. even to the end of the age. So we learned something recently that kind of blew my mind. Did you guys know that there's 3.3 million unreached people? Billion, I said million, I meant billion. We'll go even look more, back. billion. <laughs> billion, that's even crazier. And you see all those dots? Those represent unreached people, people that don't have the Bible, that don't know God, and don't know the power of the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, so we have an amazing opportunity to bring the Great Commission to life. Ladies, I know it's Rona season, but, we may not be able to go physically, but we have an opportunity to go with our hearts and with our giving. Yeah. So we're partnering with this organization called AIMS, okay? AIMS supports missionaries, but they do it in a really unique way. They take people that are from their community, that know their language, that love Jesus, and can't wait to spread the word to the people that are unreached. So we have an opportunity right now to adopt this beautiful lady named Sapora. Yes. She is from, she's uh, from Nepal and there's a community called Talung that has only 3,300 people and they, only 3,300 people speak that language and this lady Sapora also speaks it. Now she's a new Christian and she loves God so yes. much, loves yes. Jesus, that even though she is currently being persecuted, she's like, send me, I am available. Yeah. So we have the opportunity tonight as a beloved sisterhood to sponsor her. Yeah. The cool thing is because she's already in the community, it's hardly, it's so, it's so nominal, $1,200 for an entire year. I can't even buy groceries for my family for $1,200 for an entire year, but we can take care of this lady, all her needs met so she can say Jesus yes. in the community of Talung. How do we do it? What does that look like? Okay, so if you want to, pay by um, cash or check. If you want to give that way, our ushers are going to come forward and you can come up starting now um, and give in the buckets or with your phone, 
there's a link um, by using this QR code that will allow you to give digitally. But wait, there's more. That's like, I've always <laughs> wanted to say that on a stage, but wait, there's more. So Uncommon, obviously, is going to help us by matching whatever money we raise tonight. So this is a free event, right? We don't ask for any money for you to be here, but if you have it in your heart to donate to Sephora, all that money's gonna go right to her. And see these cute sweatshirts? See them? What? All the profits for these tonight are also gonna go right to our missions. So we're very excited. $600 is our goal. Who likes to competitive and likes to beat goals? <laughs> there we go, there we go. My beloved sisterhood, fantastic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. So that's what we're calling you guys tonight. If you have the call to, to donate right now, please come on up. If you need to donate digitally, there's the thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and close us out in prayer. Father God, thank you so very much for this opportunity to be your hands and feet, Lord. Even when we physically cannot be there, that we can help build up Sephora. And Lord, as she is just t teaching the name of Jesus in her community, let it be the hunger and thirst just grow harder and faster and more and more and more. And just let that bowl just keep getting bigger and bigger and let it spread like a wildfire to the surrounding communities. And that your name, Jesus, Jesus will be the word around the entire community, Lord. That, that Hinduism will be like, it's not even there. It's all about you, Jesus. Thank yes. you so much for Thank this opportunity, you. Lord. I pray for the women that are supporting them that will continue to say the name Sephora and build her up as we yes. sponsor her for the next year, if not more, Lord. And thank you so much again for this fellowship today. In Jesus' name, amen.